Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a brilliant attacking game played by the magician from Riga, Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Estonian chess master Ivo Ney and this was a blitz game played in 1958. But before starting our game first want to sharpen your tactical skills. Please take a look at this position and try to find the mating line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Back to our main board and now without further ado let's get started with this fascinating game and see what happened on the board. The future world chess champion Mikhail Tal who was playing with white pieces opened up with e4 and Estonian chess master Yvonne responded with e6. Black goes for French defense d4 d5 and against French Tal chose the advanced variation e5 c5 c3. Meanwhile black keeps on putting pressure on d4 square which is a standard idea in French defense. Queen b6 and bishop d3 Tal goes for Milner Barry Gambit named after British chess player Stuart Milner Berry. Milner Berry contributed to chess theory a lot. For those who do not know, I have to tell you that there is a Milner Berry variation not only in French defense but also in King's Gambit, Petrov defense or even in Nimza Indian defense. Here we have c takes d4, but of course black can't win a pawn. This is a well-known trap because in the end of the day white can announce a check and can win black queen. That's why after c takes d4, c takes d4, we have bishop d7. Black covered his king and already wants to munch the pawn on d4. But instead of thinking about defending the pawn, for example a move like bishop c2 is very popular, Mikhail Tal chose a very aggressive line and he castled king's side. By the way, I forgot to tell you that Milner Berry, after whom this variation is called, also was a code breaker during World War II. So, with his last move, Tal is inviting Black to win a pawn, and even A went for it. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4 is on the board. And I have to tell you that this is a very tricky and dangerous line. In this line, usually white is sacrificing a pawn or two, but in return is getting a ferocious attack, and black needs to make accurate moves, otherwise can quickly lose the game. Here we have knight c3, Tal is also allowing black to win the second pawn, and we have rook e1. The problem with black's position is that black still hasn't solved the development of his kingside pieces and as black king is stuck in the center of the board, that fact gives white a huge compensation. Here Yvonne A played queen d6, stick to this pawn on d5, but according to modern theory playing queen b8 is considered to be a safer continuation for black and then bishop d6. But in our game we have queen d6, black decided to keep his extra two pawns. Here we have knight b5. And all in all we have queen b8, which is a total mistake. Well, after queen d6, already moving back, the queen on b8 is like a suicidal decision. Instead, it was better to play queen b6 if bishop e3, then queen a5. But in our game after knight b5, we have queen b8. Now comes queen f3. White, white queen is both coming after the pawn on d5. And moreover, there is even a more venomous threat, bishop f4. That's why black played bishop d6, acted against white's bishop f4 threat, and we have queen takes d5, but according to Stockfish, capturing on d6, and then developing the dark squared bishop with the tempo, and then playing queen g3 is even stronger if f6, then rook c1, followed by rook c7. But as this was a blitz game, okay, typical inaccuracies are very common to blitz, and we have queen takes d5. Tal is allowing bishop takes h2 check, which black made, and king h1, bishop c6. Well, it was high time to kick away the knight from this active square and then offer the exchange of queens, but in our game after king h1 we have bishop c6. Now comes queen g5, knight f6. Of course, you can't capture on g7 because of this rook g8 move. That's why, after... Knight f6, Tal first played f4, cut the communication between the queen and the dark squared bishop and already both wants to munch this bishop or 
the pawn on g7 is also a target for aggressive white queen. Here black played h6 but this is losing on the spot. Instead it was better to allow white to win this bishop and, and then proceed with the game you know but still white has a winning position. Let's go back but in our game after f4 we have h6 and Tal simply munched the pawn on g7 and it turns out that already rook g8 is not dangerous because the pawn is on f4 and that plays an important factor in the game because after queen takes f6 if you capture on g2 with the bishop then white can play king takes h2 and if rook takes g2 then simply bishop e4 and again white is winning. But the interesting thing is that after rook g8 Tal didn't go for queen takes f6 and instead he chose the most precise continuation. I'm not even going to ask you to find that line because I'm sure that you found Mikhail Tal's next move. That move just asks itself to be played and Tal went for an absolutely fantastic rook takes e6 check. Did you hear that munching sound guys? That's astounding, look at this. f takes e6 was played and in here the light squared bishop joined the attack. Bishop g6 check, king d8, queen takes f6 check after which black resigned. If king d7 then queen f7 check is coming and then queen takes g8. Well, Looks like that black king can quickly get checkmated and this is a totally winning position for white. That's why after queen takes f6 check we have a resignation. A very impressive attacking game by Mikhail Tal and by the way I would like to suggest to explore this Milner Berry Gambit which can be a nice surprise weapon when playing against French defense. Especially the aggressive players would appreciate this line a lot. Well thanks for watching, in the end here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well, I will see you in my next video.